Occasionally, we run into the unexpected, those little things that alone might not create too much of an issue, but coupled with smoke and fire conditions can complicate or stop our actions completely or have a significant impact on fire behavior. Critical in our old homes is the modification of the original living space. Many of these homes have been divided up into apartments. Some have taken the time to do it right, others have not. Either way, it forces changes to our response. Our orientation becomes complicated, our tactics modified, and our eventual course of action at times a bit unexpected. These homes are often no longer traditional single-family dwellings, but are now increasingly complex multifamily units. One of the most common complicators is changes to the access, egress, and travel pathways throughout these homes. Entrances and exits are added or removed, stairways eliminated, blocked off, or inserted in places we would not normally see them. These issues are critical to fire ground operations and should be shared with command and other units when they are found, as they can affect victim and firefighter travel, fire discovery, fire behavior, and victim location throughout an incident. In the following images, we'll look at some issues we've come across on our responses. They are by no means the worst or most significant. However, each of them can become just that under right conditions. Many people have gotten into trouble throughout history by failure to imagine the potential consequences of a situation or recognize the cascading events unfolding in front of them that have led to catastrophe. By seeking out and sharing these types of situations and by conducting drills and discussions about how they could affect our response under fire conditions and how we might adapt our strategy and tactics to them, helps potentially lessen their impact when a fire does occur. Take the time to find these anomalies and share them with those around you. You never know when that investment of time and effort might save a life. Hi everybody, it's Brian Bastinelli, and today we're going to look at unexpected modifications. In the first set of images, we see a bathroom that was added on the first floor of a two and a half story wood frame duplex that is right in the area where the basement steps used to be. So we were looking for the basement. We found this pocket door, slid it open. There's a bathroom. There was no other access to the basement found on that floor. When we went outside, we found a side C exposed basement door, entered there and found the previously used basement steps. And then you can take a Look in the second two pictures there, you see that they ran some HVAC and plumbing into that area. Uh, They ran perpendicular joists to the ones that were existing, and they're just kind of toenailed into the existing joists. So we run into a couple of issues here. There's a a new avenue for fire spread through the HVAC. Uh, If the fire is exposed to these joists after a while, we're going to get some degradation and, and have some potential for collapse at that location. Uh, As well, we're going to struggle finding the access point to the basement should there be a basement fire. Obviously, a 360 is going to help us find the exposed basement, but that's not going to tell us that there's not an interior access either. It's expected, and in this particular situation, there's no indication that they had removed it. The next images are basically stairways to nowhere. The one on the left is a short but steep and narrow stairway that goes from the second floor to what was a roof access point. However, that was closed over and a new roof put on top. And if you look to the right of it a little bit at the top of the steps, you see that's directly open to the cock loft. So you could have pretty good fire spread come up these stairway and get right into your cock loft area. On the right is a stairway that goes from the second to the third floor, However, this was in a duplex and they decided to cover over the stairs and make a top floor apartment that covered uh, both the uh, right and left sides of this duplex. Uh, The doorway was left open, so if, if you're searching or moving throughout the building, you could start up these steps and then all of a sudden you would hit the ceiling there. So you just gotta watch. Sometimes people will leave the stairways in place and then you will have to kind of figure that out. That's important information to share with everybody and we'll see some more examples of that in a few sets of pictures. This set of images was taken in a large three-story 
ordinary constructed duplex where they basically took the center room on each floor, removed it from use as a room, and put a large shaft uh, creating kind of like a an atrium in the middle of the house. Uh, it was unusual in that it took a huge amount of space away from use in the house, but at the same time, um, it also uh, created an open shaft within the house that would allow for smoke and fire travel and uh, complication of searches in that it would be disorienting as you could move completely around this particular open area. In these images, we see that at the top of the shaft, there are skylights and a large chandelier. And then on each floor, there's basically a, about a three foot walkway around the entire shaft where that room used to be. And now this uh, opening now exists. So unexpected, it's going to complicate fire travel and smoke travel and obviously uh, orientation for firefighters. This image is probably a little bit more challenging to interpret, but this is a three-story wood frame row house that was turned into a bar, and they needed to open the first floor space up uh, pretty wide, so they removed the steps to the second floor. They only put a drop ceiling in, however, and left that space open, and you can kind of see a piece of plywood up in that blue area, that's actually the second floor hallway, but you see there's a piece of plywood that was covering the door. So we have a couple of issues here. Um, obviously, you can see there's a lot of fire damage to this area. We had fire start in the bar area and extended up into this space once the drop ceiling started to fail. So we had a very uh, hot, smoky fire above with a chance for rapid fire extension, which we did get, but we had lines in place and were, and were able to control it. The other issue that this creates for us, obviously, is a fall hazard. If that plywood burns away or is moved, a searching crew could uh, easily fall right through there, right through the drop ceiling and into the fire area. Here we see a stairway that was added to make a two-story apartment in a large three-story ordinary duplex. This was a hole that was cut into the floor and steps added. It is all wood. Uh, it kind of angles there. And you can see in the middle picture, there's space on, on either side of the steps. Uh, very steep, uh, narrow, and uh, combustible. This is not something that you would expect to find in a front bedroom of an apartment. So the the chances of falling down there are increased. There is a little bit of a rail. Again, it's all combustible, but if you're if you're doing a search or you VES that front window and uh, aren't paying attention and you move over there, you could take a tumble down the steps. And obviously, fire spread is a significant issue here. These images are in the same house, but a different area. And you can see that they added a plywood ceiling with uh, two by four uh, joists almost to hold it in place. Assuming this was done to cover up plaster that was failing or had failed, but it adds a significant fire load to the structure and it is gonna complicate opening up in smoke conditions as it's something that we would not typically expect. And when you hit it the first couple times, you're going to realize that this is not your typical plaster and lath ceiling. And for all we know, that plaster and lath ceiling is still intact to some degree above this, making multiple layers for you to have to go through. Obviously, because this is now a combustible ceiling and not just plaster and lath, fire spread is going to be an issue here. Preheating and spread throughout the building is going to be aided by having exposed and painted wood throughout this living space. In this two-story ordinary taxpayer, uh, we found an interesting situation in the rear stairwell. Exit signs were all lit, uh, pointing the way to the stairwell, but once you got down to the bottom, you couldn't open the door. We had a significant smoke condition in here from an unattended cooking, and we moved down that way to try and get some ventilation going, and we were unable to get the door to budge. And when we got outside to see what the problem was, we found this uh, course of bricks at the bottom of the door. So we used a sledgehammer and removed it, 
and we were able to get the door open to accomplish our ventilation. We found the owner uh, who owned a uh, the whole building. They run a laundry on the first floor and have apartments on the second floor. We asked him, you know, what this was about, and he said that he got tired of hookers bringing their johns into this stairway to do the business, so they just bricked it shut so they could no longer get in there. We explained to him that while we appreciate the situation that he was in, this is not an acceptable uh, response to that situation because it creates a significant egress issue. He certainly did not see it as seriously as we did, so we referred it to codes and um, hopefully it's been taken care of fully. These images are in the same building as the previous set, and this is on the second floor apartment area. This is a common hallway between a couple of the apartments. You can see a couple of different things here. At the end of the hallway, there is a storage area of large plastic bags filled with large plastic bags, which obviously creates a pretty significant fire hazard. And then you see that there are some single room occupancies. So in order to get more out of this building, this guy split the apartments up into single rooms and then had common areas like a common living room and a common kitchen area that all the residents would use. So, you know, you could consider this um, illegal. This, while some single room type occupancies can be approved, this this had not been. Uh, and you see the, here are the padlocks on, the, on each of the doors for the different residents to use to get into their areas. So again, this was referred to codes. This can create issues for searching, under uh, high heat and smoke conditions, uh, and obviously we have a lot of combustible material stored in a in a common hallway. In this set of images, we see a fire that kind of kind of got us on the initial uh, stretch. This is a row house, three story ordinary, with a two floor bump out in the rear. Uh, we're stretching in, smoke showing, uh, stretch into the first floor, and we can see the glow of the fire back towards the kitchen. So we move back to the kitchen and find that there's no fire in that area. But when we look up, we see that the rear bedroom has been partially removed, and there is a large kind of atrium-type area. And when we looked up, we could see the fire burning above us. So we had to relocate the line and get up the steps. Because it was already charged, uh, as we thought it was a first floor fire, it kind of slowed us down. But we got up there and then had to work this area. Uh, we had fire on the rear porch and in the walls and in the cock loft above. So, you know, we had uh, this large open area, two stories, and it complicated getting that ceiling opened up and, and that area overhauled. As well, you can see the window is still intact. So that is in the air shaft outside, the open air shaft. So there's side C access to that area. So a VES of this, what would be a bedroom from that window is something that could be done. If you're not sounding the floor prior to doing a VES, you could run into a situation like this and drop down into the first floor. So this was a this was an interesting one um, that you know under smoke and fire conditions these things are hidden from you know plain sight and you have to kind of navigate your way through and figure out what's going on. Where now it looks easy to see at that moment these things are not as easy to figure out. Here we see some renovations taking place in the old what was. I believe, uh, part of the bathroom. Uh, this was conf reconfigured pretty significantly, but you see here there was a counter a countertop and some plumbing, and instead of removing that stuff uh, or closing it off, they're just they're are, they're just going to close it off. They put some studs up, they're going to put some walls up, and now you have a, a pretty sizable void space uh, that you have no idea is even in existence. In these pictures, we see a, another stairway going from the first floor to the second floor that was closed off because they made this house into multiple apartments. This is a three-story ordinary row house, and on the first floor, they made an apartment, and at the base of the steps, they built a closet. So you go over to where the steps are and open the door, and it's a coat closet. On the second floor, looking down, you can see they put like a a little gate, like a little picket fence type gate that burned, mostly burned away. And then you can look down there and see that they didn't really finish it off 
at all. Uh, that's insulation that was just laid over top of it. It's an OSB um, like build out, and then um, they threw some insulation over top, and and that was the extent of that. Obviously, we could have some complications when we communicate where this location is. If you fell down there or somehow started to go down there and ran into a wall, this is the stairway to nowhere uh, that we saw in the previous pictures going up. Just this particular set is a stairway to nowhere going down. So make sure that you communicate this to command so that it can be radioed to all personnel that the steps are no longer in play and we have to find an alternative uh, access um, either from the second floor to the first or vice versa. While we're talking about steps, we'll take a look at these images where a stair lift was installed on the steps. And this is a, a pretty common modification in older homes as um, our population ages and steps become uh, troublesome to navigate. This is a, a really good tool for them to get up and down. It is a challenging tool for us uh, during a, a fire attack just because it creates a very narrow pathway and it is not removable. It is a very solid system that is built into the wall. You cannot really take these apart in any efficient time frame or manner. Uh, obviously, it creates a little corner there where you can store some additional stuff. And, and we often find these areas full of storage materials of various types. So it's just a it's something that is going to be pretty common, but can complicate your stretch and obviously moving firefighters and victims up and down these stairways is complicated, uh, not even to mention, you know, assisting EMS getting somebody out on a, a reef's uh, litter or something like that. While we're talking about like atypical situations and unexpected modifications, we come to a two and a half story ordinary duplex that in the front looks pretty typical. Uh, you can see that there are a significant amount of mailboxes on that front porch, which is going to initially indicate a rooming house of some sort or a single room occupancy. But as we go around the back, you can see that there might be what looks to be a pretty significant addition to this house. In the next set of images we'll take a look at here, you see that there is actually a three-story masonry uh, addition put onto the back of this house. And it is not something that you would expect. It doesn't look remotely like it should be attached to the type of house that it is. Uh, this creates uh, different layouts, it creates different avenues for fire spread, and a pretty high occupancy load for this house. So again, this is a 360 issue, a get out in your neighborhood issue. This is something that's obviously been here for a long time, and it's something that should be on our radar. But the only way we're going to find this stuff out is to get out there and look for it, and then document it and share it with those around you. As our houses get older and go through their life cycle, they start to develop structural issues and sometimes they have to be taken down. But sometimes people try to do what they can to save as much of them as possible, which is the case in this particular set of images. They took the interior of the collapsing house out, uh, removed the roof, tried to start stabilizing it, and their intention is to build a new structure within this, creating a legacy and lightweight hybrid type of a house. And with the front wall still there, we don't know that that is what's on the inside. So we think we're going into a type three ordinary that's 100 plus years old, when in reality, it could have a completely lightweight interior. In this particular house, work seems to have just stopped and it's been sitting here for, for quite a while, which gives us um, at nighttime um, the potential to think that we need to get into this house. Smoke is coming out and you could take quite a trip through one of those windows. Obviously, we're aware of it. Uh, we shared this information through a safety bulletin with our members throughout the department, and I suggest that you do that as well when you find something of significant importance out there in the streets. Okay, so that's been a quick look at some of the unexpected modifications that we've come across. There's plenty more that we see on a regular basis that I'm sure you've seen in your area. The important thing to take away is that this stuff is out there and it's happening. We need to be out looking for it and then documenting it when we see it and sharing it with the other members of our department. That's critical to keeping our members as safe as they can be because this stuff is going to keep happening, whether it's approved by codes or happening illegally. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, please share it with uh, those that you think will enjoy it and get some value out of it as well. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I post this kind of stuff as I come across it on my various pages. Uh, pretty much everything is at Brian Bastinelli. And I will post some more videos similar to this as we move forward on my YouTube channel, which is just YouTube Brian Bastinelli. Thanks for checking it out. Remember, be smart, be as safe as you can, and do your job.